Hi, I'm Alex. I bought new pants for this talk. <laughs> I work with solar, and I want to talk about some ideas in solar that excite me very much. So, uh, first of all, just a quick show of hands. How many of you use solar power in your homes? Uh, nobody. That's not a coincidence. One person. Yes, one person. That's awesome. Uh, it's not a coincidence. And uh, what I want to go into for this talk is some of the reasons why we don't have solar and some of the reasons why solar isn't used in the way that it can be most effective. Uh, by the way, uh, I don't really know how to use PowerPoint, so I just got a Sharpie and drew all my slides. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have colored Sharpies. I figure for the TED talk, I'd use colored Sharpies. But this is just TEDx. So it's OK. Uh, OK. Uh, so look at a standard solar panel. Uh, so this is a standard 180-watt solar panel, the kind of thing you'd see on a rooftop. Uh, think about what's in your home that runs off of 180 watts. Uh, I was thinking about my home. And uh, there's some basic devices, like a fridge. Uh, my mini fridge runs on 85 watts. Uh, computers, a couple hundred watts. A blender, really bright lights. Uh, and there's a commonality between all these things, which is that you're using them every day. You're using them now, whether or not you have solar. You use them in your home. You plug them in. You use them in the same way, no matter what. So if you went ahead and put a solar panel on your roof, uh, the way you value that solar, the way you decide how useful that solar panel is, it's framed in terms of the grid. So think about this. If I use that solar panel to power my blender and make a delicious smoothie, that means that the power to make that smoothie, I don't have to buy that from the grid. And so when I think about how useful that power is, I think, well, here's how much I would pay to get that from the grid. So this is how much I value it at. Uh, and similarly, if I produce extra energy on my solar panels, I sell it back to the grid at grid rates. And what that means is, by connecting a solar panel to the grid, I define the value of solar in terms of the grid. Uh, can you go to the next slide? I, uh, this is my Moralco bill. It's late. Uh, and you can see exactly here uh, how this is valued. Uh, I pay 10 pesos a kilowatt hour. and that costing comes from things that have nothing to do with solar. They have nothing to do with how I use that power. These have to do with things like the cost of coal. These have to do with the cost of stringing transmission lines. It's unrelated to the value of solar, but somehow I value solar according to this price. Isn't that weird? I think it's weird. Um, when, you have, when you value solar according to the grid, a solar panel boils down to this simple formula. A 180-watt solar panel costs about 120 pesos a watt. So this whole thing would cost 22,000 pesos. Uh, you can calculate based on how much sun you're likely to receive on average in the Philippines over a day, how much energy and value based on these grid prices you can produce during a day, about 10 pesos a day. And then the question becomes, how long until it pays for itself? What's the payback time, the ROI? Come on, uh, six years. I'm not excited by this. I'm really not. This, this formula is boring to me. It's not interesting. First of all, I'm 27 years old. I haven't lived in a house for six years. I won't for the foreseeable future. I don't think about the way I buy things. I don't think about, can I buy something that pays for itself in six years? My guess, looking at most of you, you're young. You guys are students. You're recent graduates. We're in similar boats here. This formula? is a finance formula. It boils down to getting a, lend and making a, getting a loan and making a return on it. There's nothing wrong with that. This is an exciting formula for a bank, but it's not exciting to me. And the reason that this formula doesn't excite me is it doesn't show me how I can use solar in my own life. And it leaves out a couple key things about solar. It says that the best thing I can do with a solar panel is just make electricity that's the same as electricity made by a coal plant, that's the same as electricity made by a nuclear plant, by a hydro plant. There's nothing special about solar. It's just another way to make electricity. Um, I don't actually think that's true. 
So I want to show you a couple things that uh, kind of demonstrate this. But the big, the big issue here is when you connect a solar panel to the grid, you're fighting the grid. You're defining the value of that solar panel in terms of the grid. And you stack all the cards against using solar. You make it as hard as possible for that solar to be useful and valuable to you. So if you want to use solar, don't fight the grid. All right. The first use of solar, the first commercial use of solar, uh, believe it or not, was in marine buoys. Do you like my buoy? That's my buoy. I can draw really well. Um, <laughs> it's in marine buoys. This was in the 60s. Solar was hundreds of times more expensive than it is today. And people wanted to use it to power buoys floating out in the middle of the ocean that would flash, that would measure data, that would send radio signals to boats to warn them of hazards. And these buoys, they're out in the middle of the ocean. It's hard to get power to them. It's really hard to get power to them. But a solar panel can be anywhere. You just open it up and put it towards the sun, and power comes out. Uh, if you wanted to connect that marine buoy to the grid, you'd need like a long extension cable. I don't even think they sell them at the hardware store. It's a pain in the butt. Uh, the second use of solar was in space, an even longer extension cable. For, using, for powering satellites. You're getting these things up there. It's really hard to get power up to space. And even if solar is expensive, it has this little neat benefit, which is you can put it anywhere. Anywhere there's light, you can have power. Now, uh, when, oh, no, back one. Uh, when you think about these types of situations, they fall into this kind of pattern where you'll see distributed devices that are out all around that need a little bit of power. And it's hard to get power to them. The extension cord is tangled. It's too long. Uh, it's expensive to drive out there and plug in another battery into a satellite. This is a pattern we're going to see repeated over and over again. And when you see that pattern, that's a time when solar can be really useful. Because the special thing about solar, the distributable nature of solar, shines at this moment. Now we can go to the next one. Okay. I want to tell you someone who's doing it right, who I think gets solar, gets the places it's used. And this is a company called Big Belly Solar, and they make trash cans. Uh, specifically, they make public trash cans, trash cans you might find on a university campus in a city. And they use a small solar panel to run a compactor to squish the trash down. And using a compactor like this, they can squish four trash cans worth of load into one trash can. Or, put differently, you can reduce the frequency of collection by four times. If you had to go and pick up trash four times a day, now you only have to do it once a day. If you have to pick it up twice a week, you have to do it once every two weeks. And that's interesting, because the trash can by itself, it doesn't stand alone. It's part of this larger ecosystem. You now have the trash. You have to go pick it up. You have to pay the guys to pick it up. You have to put fuel in the truck. You have to carry it over to the landfill. You have to come back. So think about what goes into picking up trash. Uh, you have to put fuel in the truck. I'm thinking about my trash route right outside my home in Marikina. It's a 20-mile trash route. Happens twice a week. Four guys are working the truck. Uh, trash vehicles are the least fuel-efficient trucks on the road. They get between two and four miles a gallon. It's a terrible uh, mileage. And then uh, as you drive them more and more, you have to maintain them. You have logistics in the trash organizing hub where you're going to tell these trash cans where to go, or tell these trash trucks where to go, make sure they're fueled, make sure they're fixed, make sure everyone gets paid. All these things cost money. So uh, I want to stack side by side this 30-watt solar panel that this company uses to run this compactor. And I want to look at what you get if you just connect it to the grid versus if you use it to compact trash. If you connect it to the grid, uh, and we look at how much carbon dioxide it can offset. We're going to offset, uh, let's say, carbon dioxide that would be produced by making electricity in the coal plant in Laguna that comes and powers a lot of Manila. You would offset 150 grams of carbon dioxide a day. That's not very much. And you would produce 1.65 pesos worth of value a day in, at current electrical prices. That's also not very much. Compare that with if you're using it to compact trash and you're reducing the frequency of these trips, where now you only have to go uh, three quarters, you only have to go one out of every four trips you were making before, 
you're saving 15 gallons of diesel fuel from being burned every week. And that means that over a day, you're saving 21.8 kilograms, offsetting 21.8 kilograms of carbon dioxide from being released. Uh, and that's 145 times more offsets than you would if you just use this as a commodity solar generator. Uh, you're saving the cost of doing all these garbage trips, about 1,000 pesos a day it works out to, 600 times more than just using the same solar panel as a commodity generator. And the reason this is interesting is solar is distributable. You can put solar in these trash cans all over and have it do this little task. So uh, I also want to touch on something a little closer to home. Uh, so phones uh, have a similar situation here in the Philippines. Tens of millions of people in the Philippines live at the edge of the grid where they have cellular access for phones, but they don't have grid power access to charge the phones. So you'll see this situation where there will be multiple households, almost every household will have a phone, and these phones need to be charged every week. So what people will do is they'll get someone in the village who will take these phones on a motorcycle, charge about 10 pesos to charge a phone, uh, drive into the nearest grid-connected point, charge them, wait around for an hour or so, and then come back. So you can charge a phone like this in a day using a half-watt solar panel. A half-watt solar panel connected to the grid generates 0 0.0275 pesos a day, an extremely small value. But if you're using that same panel to obviate the need to drive these phones all around and plug them in and drive them on back, that's saving you 1.4 pesos a day. It's still a small number, but it's 52 times more valuable using it in this distributed way than it was using it in this, uh, as a commodity electricity generator. So this is this pattern that emerges uh, when you have little distributed devices that need power that are all around, and they need a little bit of power, and you have to bring them to the grid and bring them back. That's this pattern where solar can make this disproportionate value. Uh, if you look up, uh, and similarly, like in the, in the case of the garbage cans, you have a little bit of uh, resources or information you need to collect, some trash you need to bring back to a central location, some information like your the number on your meter, on your electricity meter, on your water meter, that you need to send people out driving all over town to pick out. Uh, if you can do that with solar and do it a little smarter, make a little push with a little bit of energy into one of these ecosystems, you can make a huge change, this disproportionate value. And to me, that's fascinating. So, uh, what do I have, like two minutes left? So uh, it's probably a good time to introduce myself. Uh, I make machines that make solar panels. Uh, I love ideas like this. I make small solar panels like I'm talking about here. And uh, I think a lot about how more ideas like this can be around us. Because I think ideas like this make our cities better, they make our lives better, they make the planet better. And I think about how we can make it easy for more ideas like this to come into existence. It's awesome the ones that are out there. I want to see more. So, when I think about how solutions like this that use solar uh, get built, there's these basic ideas, these basic trends that I see in every solution. If I need to collect a little bit of power to run a compactor, I need a solar panel, I need a little bit of electronics, and I need a battery to store that power. Uh, right now, if I'm going to build a solar compactor, I have to design that from scratch. It's hard, it takes time, it takes money. That's a pain in the butt. Why can't I just buy a little bit of solar that just works night or day as a little building block of a solar device that I can plug into, like plugging into the grid? When I plug into the grid, I don't think about how the coal plant is burning coal and turning a turbine. I just think that it works. Why can't solar be that same way? Uh, similarly, for collecting information, uh, same thing. Store up a little bit of energy in a battery have a solar panel, electronics, a battery, and some way to send that back, a, a little $10 cellular modem that can text back data wherever it is, a distributable, distributable energy or information collector. Things like this can be the building block for lots more innovations, for lots more uses of solar that make a lot of sense, that have this extra value. So this is, like I said, I think we need more of this. I think that we use tons of energy on an ongoing basis that we don't need to be using. 
And just using a small push by solar to do something a little smarter, to do something in a clever way that reduces this consumption, that's so much more valuable than just using solar to make more grid energy to, that continues consumption at our current rates. This is a way to reduce consumption. So ideas like this uh, I find fantastic. And I start to see opportunities like this everywhere, where there's distributed things that need a little bit of power that come to a central point information, where there's resources that come in. And if you start looking for them, and I really encourage that you start looking around as you, as you walk around, look for situations like this and think about them. They're in the DNA of our cities. They're everywhere. They're the way we live. It's all about collecting things and bringing them to one spot. Think about them and learn to recognize them, because it's really neat when you see one. When you're looking at one, you're not just looking at this weird system that's, globbled, that's cobbled together in a city. You're looking at an opportunity. So, salam Paul.